but in 1956, his Bad Penny Blues became the first jazz track to make the top 20. It so happened that the first of what I call the creative sound mixers, Joe Meek, came in. And of course, being Joe Meek, he fiddled about with everything, you know. I went off on holiday for about three weeks, and um, I hadn't heard it then. And if I'd heard what Joe Meek had done to it, he distorted the bottom end of the piano so that it made a sort of bonging noise. Pianos don't go bong, and bong, and bong. And he heavily over recorded Stan Gregg's brushes. If I'd heard a test pressing in time, I would have rung up uh, whoever produced the record and, at, at the EMI and said, uh, I don't want that to go out. However, by the time I got back from holiday, it was number 19, and I uh, shut up. <laughs> 